To answer this question, I went back to one of the questions from a couple weeks ago. And, um, so this is a test about proportions. Uh, they've got this producer that claims that 20% of his, uh, that, that uh, he's got a 20% or more of the market share. And so then a competitor went out, did 200, a sample of 200 OJ drinkers, and found that 33 of them preferred the brand. So does the sample refute the producer's claim? Well, where do we go? How, how do we answer that? How, we, how do we answer this? What's this whole rejection region all about? So the claim is, uh, well, the, the population proportion, the claim is that the producer says 20% or more of his drink, of your orange juice drinkers like his product. So he's making the claim that uh, the center's 20% or, or higher. I um, mean, you know, on another side, I'm going to do an HO and H1. Um, but to talk about sampling distributions, because that's really what, what this is all about, is you know how sampling samples behave. They're, you know, the central limit theorem tells us they're in a normal distribution and it's got a certain center and, and a standard deviation. Well, the standard deviation for proportions is you take your stated center and you calculate it times one minus that, that center divided by your sample size, take the square root. So that's the standard deviation and here's the center for the sampling distribution. So what I did is let's, I, I did some background work here to help us try to understand this. There's this applet that, that Rossman Chance, the, those two authors, I don't know if they wrote the applet, but that's on their website. And one of the things they use in that book is they talk about the number of orange candies in a package of Reese's Pieces. And in a classroom, I would have had you do this, but since we're not. But this, what's nice about this applet is you can tell it the center well, we we have we're going to pretend these aren't about Reese's pieces. We're going to pretend this is about um, a sample of two hundred OJ drinkers, and so we know suppose if the if the manufacturer that other guy is correct, he's got twenty percent or more market share. So I said that's the center of this distribution, the twenty percent. I am going to have go out and sample two hundred OJ drinkers and count how many of them like the guy's product better than the others. And for this one sample, it had 16.5% of the, of the sample preferred this guy's product, not the two, not the 20% that he's claiming. So that's a little low. Of course, we know these things and we know samples vary and we just got to decide, is it far enough away from 20% to say that uh, the, the manufacturer is not correct? He doesn't have a 20% market share. So I did that trial and then... I ran another I ran another trial and it's a, actually as you can see I had run another one before that and but then I realized it will plot our answers plot the results as as on this graph so here's the three trials I tried and this is the last one the uh, oh, 0 0.18 I think the other one was 0.16 so that's probably there so as you can see the center is 20% and we're getting some variation and I did another one, and that one's even more extreme. Of course, this wouldn't refute the manufacturer's claim because he said 20% or more. So because that's above 20%, that supports him. Um, so then I did I did some more. I did a whole bunch more. Actually, how many I had done? 37. And I'm seeing some variation. There's this. There's the center. I need my pointer here. There's the center, and I'm getting some that are down pretty low. We just could decide: is that still is that far enough away to say that uh, the manufacturer isn't right? Of course, what's fake about this is we set the center. We know the center is 20%, right? So normally you wouldn't know this. So we're getting some sampling variation, and if you hadn't known, if we didn't know the center is 20%, and we got some values this low we might make the conclusion that the manufacturer is full of crap and he doesn't know, um, he, he his 20% figure is way too high. Okay, the other thing I did before I leave this idea is I ran a whole bunch of samples until my finger got tired clicking the button. And 400 samples, and you see how those, how all those 401 samples fall, are starting to fall in a nice normal distribution around that new center, I mean around that 20% center. That just reaffirms the central limit theorem. This stuff does work. Okay, so now let's go back to that problem and try to make some decisions about it. So I, I used that normal curve applet, that David Lane normal curve applet, to draw a general 
uh, normal curve for this. So here's the stated center, the 20%, and then to get the standard, uh, then we did the standard deviation on the other other slide. And I actually here I actually did set up my two hypotheses. Here's this this supports the manufacturer's claim, and this is the anti-claim. We're trying to disprove it. Is it we're going to get samples far enough away from 20% to say there's no way the 20% is true. Uh, so what we did now it's a little different about this. I'm going to put the put the critical value into context. You don't have to, because if you're working with the test statistic, you, that you can just run off z-scores. But for this example, I decided to do this. Um, so it's a I have a left tail test at the one percent or ten percent level of significance. So left tailed. So there's my critical value, and it is left tailed. So I know it's negative. So I wanted to be able to mark this on this graph of the distribution. So this is a z-score. It's also how many standard deviations away from the mean. In this case, below the mean. So I took the negative 1.28, multiplied it by uh, by 0.028. That's the standard deviation. They got that number. So then I got to take that away from 20 or 0.2, and that worked out to be this value here. And now we're getting to that whole idea of a rejection region. If I were to go out and do a sample of 200 200 OJ drinkers and got a sample result in this range. That doesn't refute the producer's claim. We know samples vary. Anything in here uh, is doesn't doesn't say the producer is wrong, and that's why I use the smiley face. And this is not mine. This is Lincoln Robertson's from White Mountain Community College. He's the, the guy who stole this from. Um, this is the happy place for HO because it can't be rejected. Whereas over here, this is the rejection region. This is the part that says. Okay, if I get a sample that's that far away from the, that 0.2 middle, then I have to reject HO. There's no way that, based on that level of significance, there's no way that I can say that the, the true center is 20% or higher. It's got to be less than that. Okay. Now we're going to answer this question. Um, so let's see, they found that 33 out of 200 didn't like the person's product. So this is P hat. This is our sample result. Well, that works out to be what? 16.5? So point, well, unless I'm doing my math wrong. Let me grab a calculator and check. So 33 divided by 200. Yeah, 0.165. Okay, so that's what the sample result came out to be. Now, if we look at, look at our graph here, the graph I set up, 16.5% is this side of that critical value, of that cutoff line. So that's in the place where HO can't be rejected. It's it's happy, right? So that's not in the rejection region. It's not far enough away from the 20% number to say that uh, the producer is wrong. So the data doesn't, uh, the data, we can't reject HO. The data supports the manufacturer's claim is how we'd answer that. Because remember, this was the claim. Okay, so I hope that helps you understand. I could go back out and get another sample. In fact, if we, we looked at, uh, let, me, let me grab another picture here. This is one of the ones I showed you earlier. If I were to, now we know that 16, 16.4%, uh, 16.3%, 7% is the cutoff. And I'm seeing right here, I drew a sample that's down around 15, pro probably it's 0.15, which would be in the rejection region. It would be this side of 0.1637. So in that case, if that if that's all we knew, we had that one sample result of 200, then I would have to reject HO, and that's the rejection. See, that's how that is the rejection region. It's really you know you gotta. That's why repeatability is 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 important. Uh, just taking one sample, we can say based on this sample, the data like the data supports the conclusion or it doesn't support conclusion, and this is why statisticians are so careful with their wording because. Looking at this one, this one result would lead you to make one decision. Where if you looked at a different result, you'd get a totally opposite, opposite decision. And that's what happens with. That's why we have so many conflicting reports. Um, you know, you got you should drink beer. You shouldn't drink beer. You should drink coffee. You shouldn't drink coffee. You should, you know, whatever. You know that there's that. That's why there's all the all these uh, one studies that can conflict. There's some pretty clear ones if you think about the if you go look about up about the taking aspirin, 
that once people had a heart attack, they prescribed a low-dose aspirin. That study showed extremely, that, that was extremely beneficial, and it had very low p-values, and showed that it was, it was a big, big difference. So it's just, just the nature of the beast, and it's just one tool that's imperfect, but it's, what, it's what one thing we can use. So I hope that helps answer your questions about the rejection region and how that works.